In our top story this hour, the African Union Leadership Summit is winding down today in Addis Ababa. Leaders from across the continent have been discussing the main theme of this year's summit, which is all about fighting corruption. Now, the AU says corruption contributes not only to economic troubles, but to conflict too. At the opening ceremony on Sunday, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres addressed the summit praising cooperation between Africa and the UN and vowing to work towards bolstering more cooperation. Well, CGTN's Beatrice Marshall is spearheading our coverage from the AU summit. Let's go over live to her now with the latest. Beatrice. That's right, Lindy. Hi there. The African Union Leadership Summit is coming to a close today. It's been a very busy time here. Many sideline meetings. Uh, the, uh, President Kagame of Rwanda has taken over the African Union chairmanship for the coming year. Uh, and Nigeria's uh, President Muhammad Buhari will be leading the cor anti-corruption efforts on the continent. Now, there's a sense of stronger commitment in tackling corruption. And hence, the message from the African Union leadership is that they will be focusing on that for the coming year we will have to see whether that translates towards action when it comes to individual governments though the summit hasn't just been about corruption leaders have been tackling key conflicts in africa the threat of terrorism and economic issues like free trade and visa free travel well cgtn's uh, Girum chala has been keeping tabs on the sideline meetings and what exactly has been going on here at the african union leadership he's joining me now he, from the uh, headquarters uh, Girum, first off what's the latest coming out of the leadership summit because uh, it is due to come to a close today what kind of recommendations and proposals are we likely to see well as you know this is the second day of the heads of state summit being held in the ethiopian capital of Ababa, and uh, discussions have continued in a number of areas uh, namely uh, fighting corruption in africa which is also the theme and uh, peace and security issues ranging from uh, the situation in south Af in south sudan uh, um, mali the central african republic and also uh, fighting terrorism in the continent the issue of the reform is also there so we're expecting declarations to be made in these areas and Africa especially on the theme wants to you know collectively exert an effort that can bring change in fighting corruption in this continent so heads of state are now discussing to formulate that coordination so that the the needed change can come and fighting corruption is really going to be a, a fight that is going to be won by in favor of uh, Africa so we're expecting that kind of declaration at the end of uh, the day well, Giro, there's a strong sense now that we are closer to achieving a visa-free travel for the continent. And President Kagame has said that will be his main focus and achievement for the coming year during his uh, chairmanship, as well as a free trade. What more can you tell us about that? So a free movement of people is vital for Africa because Africans have been migrating for a long time in uh, different parts of the continent. But uh, something that we should also understand uh, is that within Africa, there are many people who are moving from one country to, to the other, looking for jobs, uh, professional or otherwise, and also uh, migrating to live uh, permanently in, uh, in another country. Africa so far has been struggling to open its doors uh, for its own uh, people, respective nations have been discussing in this regard and the Africa passport has been launched perhaps two years back in uh, Rwanda on the summit uh, held uh, there but so far the African Union has been struggling somehow to make sure uh, that it is uh, going uh, down to the people so that it can be implemented as per the need free movement of people however means uh, a lot uh, it's not just uh, holding a passport that can allow you to cross borders it means uh, to trade with each other uh, the African Union is also trying to uh, for uh, the continental free trade area. That free trade area is going to contain millions, hundreds of millions of people. It's going to prosper nations. It's going to uh, pro uh, prosper organizations uh, based in the African uh, continent and of, of course, individuals too. So for that, this uh, free movement of people and the continental free trade area need to be launched at least this year. 2017 has passed for the continental uh, free trade area to be a reality. Still, time is against that plan, but now the AU uh, looks like uh, they are committed to implement it, and we will see if uh, that is going to be the case. But there is a lot of commitment now that also uh, President Kagame, who is the champion of uh, this sort of uh, free movement of people, is uh, the chair of the union so we will expect uh, time will tell if that's going to be the case 
Well, there have also been uh, strong comments on silencing the guns by 2020. South Sudan has featured very prominently here, uh, Gerum, particularly the African Union, even insinuating that they may be imposing some sanctions on those who are uh, distracting the peace. So what else is on the agenda for the African Union leadership? Beatrice, as you know, although the theme of this uh, 30th Assembly of the UNN is uh, winning the fight against corruption, uh, the main agenda on the tables of the, of the heads of state here in, in the Ethiopian capital for the summit is uh, of, uh, fighting uh, terrorism. Uh, two days back, there was a Peace and Security Council meeting headed by, uh, chaired by Egyptian President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi. There, you can feel the fever. Africa is in a panic mode. Terrorism is causing a lot of havoc in the continent. It's even jeopardizing the very existence of some nations. Libya was taken as an example because, as you know, in Libya, uh, the government is struggling to contain these terrorist activities. Uh, the other bigger problem that was raised there uh, that is uh, really putting a lot of jeopardy in African uh, states is the overflow effect of uh, terrorist elements coming from uh, perhaps the defeated IS from uh, Syria and other parts. Uh, so uh, the African Union now wants to exert a consolidated global effort, uh, war if you like, against terrorism in the continent. So this discussion will continue further. Heads of state want to uh, come together. This is no more and an individual countries, uh, uh, you know, fight against terrorism. It should be a uh, fight be among African states, even those who are not affected yet are interested to work together with those who are still struggling to come out of uh, uh, the woods uh, when it comes to fighting terrorism. So we'll, we'll expect the, the discussion towards fighting terrorism will continue, Beatrice. Right, uh, Girum Chala, following all the developments for us here at the African Union headquarters. Well, as we mentioned there, there is a sense of fatigue uh, with the situation in Sudan? South Sudan. The African Union now says it is time to impose sanctions on those who are distracting uh, the peace there. And uh, the African Union Commission chairperson spoke about that at the beginning of the summit. Take a listen. How can we not reiterate our um, uh, lack of uh, understanding? in the face of this uh, senseless violence which the belligerents are inflicting on uh, the people who have suffered for too much. I think the time has come to impose sanctions on those who are impeding peace. And I would like to reiterate the support of the African Union to IGAD. Well, Somalia has held the title of being one of the world's most corrupt countries for the past decade, and that's led to a cut in funding. Now, that's led to cut in funding, and CGTN's Abdulaziz Bilo tells us more about that situation in Somalia's corruption. In December, the United States announced that it's cutting military aid to Somalia due to massive corruption. Washington says that it couldn't account for funds meant to assist the military, a major setback for an underfunded and poorly equipped force battling militant groups for over a decade now. The United Nations, too, has raised similar concerns. The UN envoy to Somalia in his end of the assessment report noted that despite recent progress, pervasive corruption, mainly in politics, continue to hinder state building. Fighting corruption has proven hard by past and present governments. This because of the political establishment of Somalia is one based on massive corruption. There must be a paradigm shift and a change to the current political system if corruption is to be tackled. The East African nation has for the past decade been ranked as the most corrupt in the world. And despite years of efforts to establish an anti-corruption commission to deter and eliminate graft, it still hasn't yielded any success. There are no institutions and mechanisms to fight corruption. There is a very big vacuum. We need a proper and functioning justice system in place and an anti-corruption agency that can operate free from any interference as well as political transparency. It's only after achieving all this that the government can come out and say we will fight it. In late 2016 and early 2017, Somalia elected its parliamentary representatives and senators in one of the country's most competitive polls in its modern day history. Reports suggest that up to 20 million feverishly changed hands during parliamentary elections. The country has a 275-member parliament and a 54-member upper house. Analysts rank the elections as the most fraudulent political events in Somalia's history. However, the country's president says that fighting corruption remains his government's main priority for now, vowing to strengthen the country's justice system 
in a bid to improve the image of Somalia and remove it from the bottom of the global corruption index. Abdul Aziz Bilo, CGTN, Mogadishu, Somalia. Right. Peace and security issues have been dominating the conference here and African Union leadership also wants a consolidated fight against global terrorism. Well, let's get you more perspective from that. I'm joined live here at the African Union headquarters by Lizel Lowe. She's an African analyst and senior research consultant at the Peace and Security Research Program, ISS. Thank you for joining us on Africa Live. Now, peace and security issues have dominated the African Union summit here, even though the theme has been corruption. Though, what do you think is the most pressing peace and security issue? issue that the African Union needs to deal with now? Well, definitely, I think South Sudan. Um, I think here at the African Union in Ethiopia, there is a sense of great frustration and impatience. This has been going on since December 2013 when the conflict broke out. And only here in Ethiopia, um, Ethiopia is, is hosting over 700,000 refugees from South Sudan. Really think in terms of the humanitarian crisis, the refugees uh, streaming to Uganda, as we've heard often now in these last couple of months, it really is a problem that should be solved. But there was a meeting uh, of IGA, the regional organization that needs to deal with this. As you mentioned earlier, there is talk of sanctions, but this has also been on the cards for a long time. The UN Security Council, some Security Council members really have pushed hard in the past for sanctions against right. the belligerents, those that don't ex uh, uh, respect the ceasefires. But this hasn't happened. Well, the UN uh, Secretary General has even called for the East African region, Kenya and Uganda particularly, to take the lead in sorting out the situation in South Sudan. It has been discussed here. The African Union mm -hmm. Commission chairperson has called for those sanctions. But what do you think needs to be done, though, to, to have a lasting solution to this crisis? Yes, look, there needs to be more uh, talks between the belligerents. Um, uh, President Salva Kiir was here at the AU, and we've seen many times in the in the past um, meetings between Rick Machar, who is in South Africa, and uh, and Salva Kiir. But that didn't happen at this summit. What really needs to happen is the Igad nations need to speak with one voice, which is of course very difficult, and that is what is holding the whole process um, back is because there isn't a united front when it comes to sanctions. But they, they, they were really strong calls, and even from Musafaki Mohammed, the UN, uh, the AU uh, chairperson. So um, there is now an AU revitalization forum for uh, getting uh, new momentum in the peace agreement. But so far, really, the, the crisis in South Sudan, you could say that's Africa, Syria. You know, it is just absolutely devastating. It is so, devastating, but it is not the only of course, uh, crisis not the that only is happening crisis. on the continent. Somalia, too, uh, has been discussed here yes. at length. And uh, the, the initial plan was to pull out army some troops from Somalia at some point. Is that plan still going ahead? It is going ahead. The drawdown is supposed to start in 2018 and be completed by 2020. This was largely in reaction to the funding crisis of AMISOM. The European Union uh, withdrew its funding by uh, about 20 percent and so the plan was uh, announced last year for AMISOM then to play a role to train the federal uh, troops of the Somali government. But we know that Al Shabaab is still active and there are still many security challenges. So that is a very tricky uh, conflict and the US uh, has also been involved uh, a lot in the conflict in Somalia lately on a, you know, so um, there are many Somalian refugees in the region, in Kenya and in Ethiopia. And then, of course, other conflicts like Libya. We, we uh, saw meetings here at the AU, there's the Sahel, because uh, the Peace and Security Council members are also feeling very strongly about the crisis in the Sahel. There's the Central African the Republic and the DRC crisis, just to name a few. Right, uh, Liesl Lowe, we'll leave it there for the moment. But thank you very much for joining us here on Africa Live.